We are in the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 26. Can we read? My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. That is three tall people and five short people that read that scripture. Can we all of us read? One to go. <laughs> my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. One more time, my son. Give, Give me your, your heart, heart and let your, your eyes observe my ways. ways. Father, speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the living God. Let me labor for a few minutes and teach us something that will help us and shift our work with God in Jesus' name. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Now, last Sunday, but one, we spoke of three different governments that wishes to dominate your life and my life. Do you remember that? The three governments. And we spoke, we say the first government that is seeking to dominate your life and my life is the government of God. And we say the government of God is run by God through the Holy Spirit. Do you remember that? Then we say number two, we have the self-government. This is a scenario where people run their lives however they want. Just a recap. The government of self is governed by the desires of the flesh. Do you remember that? We say when you're under the government of self, it means that you decide what you want, how you want it, when you want it, with whom you you want it. In other words, you lead yourself. Yeah, you are, the, you are the master of yourself. When making decisions, you don't inquire from the Holy Spirit. It's called self-government. You just decide what you think or you feel is right. And you do it. That is self-government. Did we discuss that last Sunday but one? Then number three, is the government of the devil which we say the government of the devil is run by the devil through evil spirit called demons and the demons are able to even impact desires that are able to rule or to run your life in the wrong direction it's the government of the devil and we say all these three governments the government of God the government of self and the government of the devil they are all vying for a chance to occupy the state house of your heart and to run your life amen and uh, we understood last, sun, uh, last Sunday but one uh, that it's important for us to understand the, um, the three governments they also have policies they also have um, agendas and we discussed that last Sunday, but one, I don't want to go into all that. Now today, allow me to read Matthew 6 and verse 24. Matthew 6 and verse 24. The Bible says, no man can serve two masters. For either you will hate one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the other and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve two masters. What is the meaning of that? The meaning of that is, ladies and gentlemen, is that you, can, you cannot surrender fully to two governments. You've got to choose one and surrender to it fully if you will enjoy the benefits of it. You cannot serve God and serve self. You can't be under God and be under self. You can't be under God and be under the devil. You can't be under self and be under the devil. You must choose one government. No man can serve two masters. Can I hear somebody say amen? God 
is calling us to choose his government and allow the government of God to take over fully every sector and every department of our life. But he doesn't want to force us. God does not force you. He doesn't force me. Because God has given us something called a will. Which is the right to choose the government you want to take over and to fully manage your life. God has given us a will. He doesn't want to force himself into us. He wants you to decide which government will take over every sector of your life at any particular time. Just the same way we have the vote and we vote in the government we want. Your will is your vote. You vote in the government you want to run the affairs of your life. Say amen somebody. Also we learned that surrender to God or surrender to the government of God, the government of the Holy Spirit and to the rulership of that government is the key to God's best in life and destiny. Surrender. Allowing the government of God to take over every sector of your life. It is the master key. It is the key to working in God's best at all times. Somebody say amen. So today, I want us to just take a walk a little farther into the definition of the word surrender. Then I'm going to answer the question, why surrender is important. Let me give you a few definitions of surrender why am i doing this i want to deepen your understanding of the same by the help of the word of god number one surrender is making up your mind that i will not i will do whatever god directs me to do aha uh -huh. because i know by faith that he always has my best interest in mind amen when you make up your mind and he say, I'm going to do exactly what God wants me to do at all times. Because by faith, I have come to the realization that God has the best interest for me in mind. That is number one. Number two, surrender is transfer of trust and lordship from self to God. In other words, you relegate the runnings of your life to God from running your life you surrender the lordship of your life and you hand it over to God amen and this is where you declare that I want God's way not mine I want God's way not mine this is where you declare I know and I believe that God's plan and wisdom are better than mine this is where you declare that I'm willing to fully walk with God by faith. Where you surrender the lordship of your life from self to God. Am I communicating today? If I'm communicating, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Number three, number three, these are things we've tackled, but allow me to just, you know, speak to you again in a different language. Surrender, number three, is living your entire life before God. Living your entire life before God. It means being conscious and aware of his presence in form of the Holy Spirit. You are conscious of his presence with you. Every day. Let me tell you when you are conscious of God's presence there are so many things you can do. Because you know he's with me everywhere. It means talking to him Throughout the day, like a friend talks to another friend. It means always asking for his help when you face trials and temptations. If you walk around me, you hear me say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Everywhere. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm aware he's with me everywhere. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your guidance. Because it's, it's my way of keeping myself constantly aware of his being with me and his constant leadership and influence over the decisions of my life. Can I hear somebody say amen? So it means always asking for his help when you face trials 
and temptations. When you get into a situation, the first thing is not to call somebody, but you speak to him because you are aware that it's your very present help at all times in times of need. Say amen, somebody. Amen. It means always seeking his wisdom regarding decisions of life and destiny. You see, before I came here to minister, I knelt down in my office and you know what I said? I said, Lord, I hand over the sermon, I hand over the service, I hand over my mind to you right now. Yeah, the service is yours, I am yours. Influence everything I say to the glory of God. I'm aware that even when I'm speaking, I am being influenced by the Holy Spirit and acknowledge his constant influence over my life. Can I hear somebody say amen? It means always thanking him for his good gifts and blessings on, on you. Amen. If you travel with me, I'm going to bore you every time. Because every time you hear me, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the grace. Thank you for giving me the chance to be a preacher. Thank you for sending us to Bitini. Have Yesterday, it was just thank you, Lord. I'm so grateful for all the things you are doing, Lord. We are grateful. Take all the praise because I'm forever thanking him for the good gifts and the blessings he has bestowed upon my life. Can I hear somebody say amen? Every time I enter my car, you hear me say, Father, thank you for this car. Thank you for the blessing of this car. Thank you for being so kind and merciful to me. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is the consciousness of his presence in your life on a daily basis and at all times. That's number three. Am I communicating today? And then number four. Are we number four? What was number one? I didn't hear, but by faith, I know you said what exactly what I preached. Number three, number two. <laughs> Living your entire life before him. <laughs> number three. Okay. Number two is surrender. Number one was number one was surrender is making up your mind that I'll do whatever God directs me to do because I know by faith that he always has my best interest in mind. Number two, surrender is transfer of trust and lordship from self to God. Number three, it is living your entire life before him. Are we together so far? Number four, surrender also means committing to getting a clear and accurate view of God through his word. In Psalms 34 and verse 8, Psalms 34 and verse 8, the Bible says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Hmm. When you begin to understand, ladies and gentlemen, and you come to that place of realization that God is so good, God is so generous, God is so kind. That understanding will settle you. And what will happen? Automatically, surrender becomes an exciting adventure other than a scary demand. When you understand that God wants the very best for you, that he cares for you deeply, that he's committed to your warfare daily, that he wants the best version of you, then surrender becomes exciting adventure not a scary demand can I hear somebody say hallelujah so surrender means committing to getting a clear and accurate view of God through his word when I think how good God is I want to give my life to him again and again and again yesterday as we were driving coming you know with the team we, we were, began to discuss about some of the things we began to discuss the scriptures and I, I kept telling them, my God, I feel like committing my life to Jesus. You know, the things that were just being spoken. Thank God we travel with men of God. So a lot of revelation keeps flying everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So we, we just kept on saying, my God, I told them, I feel like recommitting my life to God again with this understanding. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? God is asking you, surrendering to somebody who loves you diligently with a commitment. He wants the very best for your life at all times. What a joy. Somebody say amen. Now listen to this, okay? Surrender is signing the bottom of the check but leaving the top part blank 
with the regard to what God wants you to do, where he wants you to go, and who he wants you to marry, and what career he would want you to pursue. Am I communicating? Okay. You see, the greatest scary aspect of a rich man, and I'm talking about you, is to get a check and put your, append your signature, but don't write the amount. Am I communicating? Then you hand over to somebody now to write whatever they want. <laughs> it, it better be somebody you trust. <laughs> Am I communicating? Yeah. So, surrender is taking the check of your life and append the signature. Then you come and drop it. Mm. You come and slip it. You take the check in, by faith and you slip it under the door of the throne room of God as an act of worship. And you tell him, now you can write anything you want and withdraw it from my life. <laughs> Am I communicating? That is surrender. In other words, write the woman you want me to marry. I have already appended the signature. Write the career you want me to get involved in. I've already appended the signature. I've already confirmed before I know what you want. So whatever you, you write there, you have the right to withdraw out of my life. Am I communicating today? That is what we call surrender. Somebody says surrender. When you do that, what you are saying is, Lord, I commit all that I am and all that I have to you forever from this day. I commit all that I am and all that I have to you forever on this very day. Can I hear somebody say amen? Somebody say surrender. Lift up your hands and say, I surrender. Allow him. Tell him I, I and, and write and say, I, I, now you can, you can actually dictate which town you want me to live in. You can dictate which house you want me to occupy. You can dictate what money you want me to give. You can dictate, you can withdraw anything at any one time. I've already confirmed, I've already appended the signature before I even knew what figure you want to write and what details you want to write. Somebody surrender. Somebody one more time say surrender. By doing that, you're telling God from this day, all that I am and all that I have or ever hoped to have is yours. Use me as you think best. Use me as you think best. Make your choice concerning my life. And that simple act of total surrender done by faith, it will launch your relationship with God into an entirely new sphere of depth and intimacy. Can I hear somebody say amen? I look at my life today, honestly, I would never have believed what is happening in my life. There is no creativity because it's not something I figured out. Yesterday, Pastor Sam was telling me something because... <laughs> You know, we, when we landed in Bitini, we met bishops and pastors lining up and, and waiting for us. So we landed, got out of the car and you know how, how the president greets people. Hallelujah. Oh, it's a nice feeling. Glory be to God. It's a nice feeling. <laughs> and I was greeting them and their bishops and their fathers. And then after that, Pastor Sam told me when we were taking a walk, he said, hey, dad, anointing is nice. <laughs> <laughs> His anointing is nice because I have seen you. I have seen you the way you've been. And now I've seen the version that you are in right now. And I can tell this has been produced by the anointing. Has been produced by the anointing. Can I hear somebody say amen? When I was going to preach, the bishop of that church insisted on carrying my Bible to the altar. And, and, and whatever. So when I got there, I, I said, you know, bishop, you have insisted to carry my Bible. It, it is supposed to be me carrying your Bible. That's the truth. It's me who should be carrying your Bible. You're my senior. <laughs> yeah. But, but because of, of, of just his mercy, whatever it is, you know, even if you start part of tapping into what you carry, let me carry your Bible. There's no way I can produce that in myself. But by surrender, the very, very version of myself that I can never imagine, it is manifesting. 
If I surrender, the version I can never expect is coming to be. So there's a version of you that is too nice, too great, too beautiful, too honorable, too dignified that you must surrender for heaven to pull you into that dimension. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? If I'm talking to somebody, say hallelujah. Shake somebody a little bit, tell them surrender. Another one, I don't know whether the other one was the right one. Check another one, tell them surrender. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Ha. Am I communicating? <laughs> but then you may ask, you may ask, why is it important for me to surrender my life fully to God? Can I just be a Christian on my own terms? The answer is a bearing no. You can't be a Christian on your own terms. And I'll give you two reasons why you can't be a Christian on your own terms. Can I give them to you? Number one, God loves you. And only him is able to give you the best life. God loves you. And only him, only him, only him is able to give you the very best life. So if you don't surrender to him, you compromise your life. You end up living the lower version of your life. And because he loves you so much, he will keep on insisting. Because he's insisting on the very best for you. Because he loves you. Can I hear somebody say amen? Now, I want you to think of God's government and self-government as architects. Okay? Do you know what is an, who is an architect? The one who builds houses? All right? I want you to think like that. Then we can be able to have a discussion. Okay? So, if you consider God, self, the devil is an architect, I want you to understand that God is a master architect. Self is a pathetic architect. <laughs> the devil is a useless, uh, that's right, is a useless architect. <laughs> One will build you to the greatest design, the most excellent design. The other one will build you to the ordinary Mabati shark herself. And then the devil, even the Mabati shark will demolish. <laughs> so I want you to think about the government as three different architects. Am I communicating today? So God is a master architect. Self is a pathetic and qualified architect. Is a quack. Self is a quack architect. So for God to work his very best plan in your life, then you need to allow him being the master architect. You need to hand over the project called your life to him so he can be able to work it out. Somebody say, say hallelujah. Say one more time hallelujah. And the formula to allow him to manage your life it is what we are calling surrender the formula to give him the tender is what we are calling surrender mm -hmm. let me give you a scripture so you can understand why God is the master architect I want to give it to you Psalms 18 verse 30 Psalms 18 verse 30. The Bible says, as for God. As his, for God. Let's read together. One to go. As for God, his way is perfect. Read again just that part. As for God, his way is perfect. Read again. As for God, his way is perfect. He's saying, as for God, the master architect, his ways, his designs, his projects are perfect. 
if that scripture would have included self, it would have said, as for self, his ways is pathetic. <laughs> as for God, his ways are perfect. Somebody say perfect. What is the meaning of the word perfect? We are learning the word of God today. Are you still here? Huh. The word perfect means you can't improve on it in any way whatsoever. <laughs> you can't improve on it in any way whatsoever. <laughs> also, the word perfect means that God's way is all inclusive. What do you mean, Pastor? What do you mean, Mr. Pastor Man? Every detail regarding your life and destiny is fully considered and included in God's plan for you. It is perfect. It is all inclusive. Hmm. When you say Ugali is perfect, you are saying the flower is the correct amount. Is it not true? The water is the correct amount. The cooking. People from Luya, you know what I'm trying to say here. The cooking, the temperature that has been involved. Yeah, it is correct. I don't know where I went. I drank tea. And I say, my goodness, there's tea and there is tea. Because the milk was correct. The majani was correct. The sugar was correct. I think even the cow was correct. <laughs> <laughs> the cow that gave the milk was correct. <laughs> Am I communicating? <laughs> now, God says, when it comes to my plan, every detail is correct. <laughs> every detail is correct. And every detail is figured out in my plan. Am I communicating today? <laughs> Do you know that in the plan of God it was already detailed that I will be in between during this season. <laughs> and next month I shall be in Busia. Come on somebody. Yeah, it, it, is, it, is, it is just everything is the details are correct. Tell somebody it is correct. Tell them the details are correct. I'm talking about who your parents are where to be born, which school to attend, which career to take, your calling, who to marry, how to marry you, how many children to have, where to live, even when to die. Every detail, every detail is inclusive in the master plan. That's what the Bible says. As for God, his ways are perfect. There is no missing detail. Am I communicating today? <laughs> yeah. Let me give you a scripture so that you can understand how powerful this one is. And this is the scripture we discussed yesterday as we were traveling. And I felt like I should give my life to Jesus again. I should surrender to God. I, can I give it to you? I might skip it. I give it to you. <laughs> Psalms 139, verse 17 to 18. Give me the passion. Make it passionate. <laughs> Let's read one to go. It's on the screen. Every single moment you are thinking of me. Every single moment. God is thinking every single moment. Every single moment. Every single moment is thinking about you. <laughs> and let me tell you, he only, this one applies to people who have made him the master architect. So every single moment, he's thinking how to make the project you. Ah, talk back to me, somebody. Every single moment, for those who have made him the master architect, every single moment he's thinking where he can improve, where he can put gypsum, gypsum, <laughs> where he can improve the paint. Come on, somebody, am I communicating today? Every single moment you are thinking of me. Continue. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. Imagine how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me constantly in your every thought. 
I'm talking about the privilege of them that have made God the master architect of their destiny. He, he thinks, he considers them in every thought. He's thinking how he can improve the bumper. <laughs> Yeah, he can do panel beating. Come on, somebody. How he can improve your marriage. How he can improve your calling. He's just thinking every single day. He's thinking about the project you, if you made him the master designer. Every single day, he's thinking how he can improve the ministry of Pastor Daniel. He says, put more oil. Put more healing. Put more anointing. Bring me more money for that young man. He's my project. His ministry is my project. JCC Eastlands is my project. His marriage is my project. Because he has surrendered to my government fully. Am I communicating today? Do you feel like me, like giving your life to Jesus again, like the way I felt? You, you still, you have the same feeling. I told you. <laughs> Continue. Oh, oh God. God. Your desires. No, we are reading together. Okay, want to go? Oh God. Your desires towards me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. Wait, wait, let's not rush. No, because if we rush, we are gonna miss the juice and the honey. <laughs> oh God, your desires towards me are more than the grains of sand on every beach. Australia beach, Ugandan beach, Tanzanian beach. Mombasa, US, everywhere. If you combine all those sads, his desires towards me, his agenda for me, the details of what he wants to do with my life, oh, the sad is less. Ah, oh, talk back to me, somebody. Ah, oh, talk back to me, somebody. Talk back to me, somebody. Yeah. You see, you're not even thinking about your tomorrow because you don't know anything. So we need to give the master designer who has the capacity to figure out everything. That's why he says he's a master designer. Surrender becomes exciting when you understand these truths. Am I communicating? In fact, when I saw in every show, I said, Diani, huh? I mean, even if only Diani alone, all that sad, if his thoughts are, those are enough. But he says, on every show in the world, every sad in every show, I say, my goodness. And God told me, that's how detailed I am with your life. I want to even in, be involved with what you eat for breakfast and what you eat for lunch. I want to add bacon because I don't like the way you're just eating bread and egg. And oh, Come on, somebody. Help me, somebody. I want to add bacon there. I want, I want you to include me in the details because I want to add some vengeance. Hallelujah. I want to add some meat because you've been eating, you've been eating mutura, mutura, mutura. I want to add, I want to, ah, come on, help me now. I want to, I want to organize it. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be involved in your traveling. I want to give you a nice car because you are my servant. I want to be involved in your traveling and improve your traveling. I want to improve your health. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? I want to improve your smile. Nowadays you don't smile much. Hallelujah. You're just quiet and just serious like a security officer. <laughs> and God is saying, I want to be involved with that so I can improve your smile and I can decorate your life because my thoughts towards you, come on somebody, they are more than the grains of sand on every soul. Clap your hands for Jesus. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hey! I say, Hey! And he said, when I awake each morning, you are still with me. You are still with me. I'm giving you the reason why you must surrender to him. When you begin to understand this truth, you run to surrender. You run to surrender. Surrender becomes a, the greatest honor of a man. Somebody shout hallelujah. You see, brothers and sisters, on your own, you don't even understand your wife. You don't even understand yourself. Let's, let's even begin there. Let's not go to your wife. Your wife is your neighbor. Let's begin with you. You don't even understand yourself. God says, I'll even teach you how to think about you. I'll teach you how to manage your you. Come on, somebody. Because all these ones, everything is figured out in my thoughts. Everything is figured out. Everything is figured out. Surrender to me and see what I'm going to do. 
Surrender to me. Make me the supreme government. No man can serve two masters. Stop self and God. Drop self. Let me be the only master. Then I'm going to download all these thoughts. And I'm going to guide you. For the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Am I preaching right today? If I'm preaching right, shout hallelujah. You see brothers and sisters on your own. On our own. We will always choose second best for ourselves. Because we don't have the knowledge of all things. Only God, the government of God, knows all things. Only God cares deeply for you. And only God is committed to go to any length in order to give you the very best. Only God. Only God. Somebody say only God. Only God. Only God. That's why God is trying to woo us. He's trying to woo us. He's trying to woo us through me to surrender to his government. He's trying to woo us. He's trying. He's working hard to tell you the government you voted in is running you down. It's time to vote the correct government. My government. And I'll not run you down. I'll build you up. Somebody clap your hands. I'm preaching. But let me say something here. Because it's important for me to bring the order of this. When God says that his plan is good and perfect. It does not mean that it's always exciting and sweet. Let me bring it so that I don't find I don't, I don't sound funny. When God says his plan is good and perfect, it does not mean that it's always exciting and sweet. Sometimes he even has to take us through pain and frustration in order to detach us from our idols and to prepare our hearts for his best. Romans 8 verse 28. Romans 8 verse 28 and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to purpose. What, what is the meaning of that? To those who are surrendered to the government of God to fulfill his purpose in their life. Then even if I choose pain it is not to hurt you. It is to prepare you for the best. Come on, somebody. It's to purify you for the very best that I have for you. Hmm. So, those, therefore, when you surrender to God, you're telling God, I trust you with my life. And I know everything you allow in my life is part of the process to bring me to my best version of myself. Even when he allows you to go through a tough season. It's because he knows that the tough season is preparing you. And positioning you to walk in his best blessings. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? For six years, I remember pastoral was very difficult for me. Very difficult. I mean the circumstances were really difficult. If I know some people would feel like you, 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 then you are under very cruel spiritual father who doesn't care and all that. And so many people have even gone quarter what I've gone through and they have disconnected with their spiritual father. But because of the journey of surrender I say Lord I don't know what you're making of me but I'm here. I must confess openly brothers and sisters if I never went through I went, what I went through in six years, I would be a very terrible pastor. Maybe I will still be a good pastor, but not the version of a pastor I am. Not the version of a pastor I am. Yeah. I'm sure I will not be the blessing I am to this church. I'm sure this church will not be even the quality church it is today. Because the version I am today was modeled during that time. And the version I am today has attracted all manner of blessings into my life. <laughs> Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? So sometimes it's, it's just like when you go through law school 
for seven years or whatever years, for five years, or, or medical school. It's like torture. Medical students don't sleep. I did diploma. I was not sleeping. I mean, it was just what route, what, and if you, if you make a negative mark, like you get a wrong, it is negative one. It is not a wrong, it is negative one. According to the consultant, you have killed life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have killed life. So you, you're not marked with wrong, it is negative one. But then you realize when you become a doctor, you don't hustle for a job. And what you earn, you earn well. So the gruesome season is preparing you for the highest earning. Ah, oh, come on, help me now. The gruesome season is preparing you for the highest earning. So surrender is to understand even if God takes me through a season, that gruesome season is preparing me for the highest earning, the highest blessings. I'm sure if Pastor Shalit has not gone through what she has gone through, she will not be a good wife today and a good mother today. Today she has all manner of meetings, parenting, you know, she has meetings with her. She has a group of mothers with, with special children. You know, she has groups of orphans that she ministers to. All that has been born out of the process. Your process is your ministry. <laughs> your process is your ministry. Your process is your ministry. If the process is the preparation for your amplification, God wants to amplify you and bring the best version of yourself and bring the greatest blessings into your life. Am I communicating today? If I'm communicating, say hallelujah. So I've given you number one reason why you cannot run your life. You must surrender. It is because God loves you and wants and only him is able to give you the very best life. Only him. Only him. Let me repeat again. Only him. Even if you live for a thousand years, you'll never get an option. Only him. Tell somebody, only God. So if you succeed before God, if you succeed without God, what you call succeed, success is failure. Because if God reveals what he would have made of you, you, be, you, hate, you hate what has become of you. Because you can have two houses and you say, Without even God uh, had two houses. God is saying, you're not supposed to be having two houses. You're supposed to have given a hundred houses. Not have given a hundred houses. By now, a hundred houses. Then you say, my goodness. Oh, the best of me is too pathetic. <laughs> the best of me is too pathetic. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? You know, you can be a pastor who has 15,000 members. But God is looking at you and saying, I had 500,000 members for you. But you're so comfortable, so excited. And you're wondering, but according to me, you are one of the biggest failure there is in the world. Because you never surrendered to me to bring the best version of me. Because sometimes when your effort and your skill gives you success, it can make you feel like I'm okay. Your success is way below what God can make of you. It, the, the, all your skills cannot even amount to quota <laughs> to what God can make of you. Tell somebody surrender. Amen. Tell them especially you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I communicating today? Number two, I'm giving you the second reason why you must surrender and then we wind up. Number two is because your life either brings glory or disgrace to the name of Christ. Your life either brings glory or disgrace to the name of Christ. Bring that on the screen. Hear me, when God manages your life, one of the main reasons he will ensure you have the very best in life is so that your life can give him maximum glory. Let me say this. The pride of every architect is the catalog of the kind of projects they have built. Is it true? Okay. So if you call for an interview and many people are lobbying for the projects to build one of the biggest something and you call for architects, huh? during the interview, 
when the architects, all of them appear, somebody must ask them, show me what you've done before. Is it true? Yeah. Show me what you've done before. If the projects they have done, they are massive, they are magnificent, then that makes that architect more suitable than all the rest. For example, if the architect says, I'm the one who built Hilton Hotel, all of a sudden, everybody are the justice. Everybody begins to, okay, I think we have the guy. What if he says, I'm the one who designed and built KICC? You have the job. <laughs> you have the job. You have the job. No, no, no deal. You have the job. Yeah. I'm the one who built this and this uh, seven-star hotel. Oh, please. You're the one? Okay. Even the rest who are robbing for the... <laughs> <laughs> for the job, they begin to sign off. <laughs> Is it true? Slowly they begin to sign off. Now listen to me. The reason why God wants you to give your projects to him, project your life, project your destiny, because he wants to decorate you so much so that he can use you to lobby for more projects. Let me say it better. He wants to use you as an epitome of soul winning. So others, they can say, if that is the God you serve, ah, that's the one I want. Because if it's the one that has made you the way you are, the making itself is a soul winning attraction to others. Am I communicating today? Okay, let me communicate it better. First Peter 2 and verse 9. First Peter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, but you are a chosen generation, a chosen people, NIV, a chosen people. A ro Let's read together one to go. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Okay, so... Let me, let, me, let me have you, Chief Bulemi. He says, among other people, and among other business people, among the other career people, among other ministers, I have chosen you. Okay? Allow me to be the one building you. Let the rest be built by self, be built by whatever they want. But you, you are my chosen people. That's why he chose Israel. He said, I will build Israel and make Israel the envy of all the other nations. <laughs> because I want to use Israel to introduce how I act and to cause others to know the kind of a God I am. Hey, I want to use my projects to be able to express my expertness. So, you are my chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special project. Am I communicating? That you may declare. The word declare there, that you, it means that you may publish that I may use you to advertise me. <laughs> that I may use you to advertise me. Have you seen designers uh, doing some clothes for somebody serious and then when they start with the design <laughs> yeah, and the photo is taken and it is published on, on Facebook and, and it's like if you want this, this uh, uh, and, and the the senior person will say, I was clothed by, isn't it? Yeah. This is designed by. Yeah. Because they understand if I do it so well on him, when they look at it, they want exactly what they are seeing on them. So God says, I want to decorate you so much as my project. So when people see my work, they also bring their projects, their life for me. Come on, somebody. They give their life to me. Hey. <laughs> yeah so I want to use you to publish I want to clothe you so that I can take photos and post and say dressed by Daniel come on somebody hey, dressed by Daniel the shoe is by the makeup is by hallelujah and then if you want the same on you call this number am I communicating so God says I want to decorate you so much then I can tell people if you want the same on you Give your life to me. 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 The 
Bible says that you may declare, you may publish, you may advertise me. You are God's advertisement agency. I say you are God's advertisement agency. Somebody shout hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you chief. Amen. So God wants to make you the display of his capacity and his abilities. He wants to make you the display of his greatness, his skillfulness, his expertness. Through your surrendered life, he wants others to understand how he works and how good he is. The Bible says that men may see your good works and glorify the Lord. They see how good God is through the way he has made you and give Jesus the glory. We deny God praise when we build ourselves because we do such a pathetic work and then we claim we are born again. Then God says, there's too much of your project here, but you are telling everybody I am the one and everybody is like, if this is God, I'm not interested. <laughs> if this is God, if this is how he does his work, I'm not interested. Then God says, but you see, half of it is me, the other half is not me. But you want to claim it's me everywhere and you are, you are misrepresenting me. You are misrepresenting me. That's why he, he is claiming, please let me do the entire project. So that somebody does not come to the table room and say, ah, then go to the toilet and say, ah, the same architect? No, something is wrong. The same is, something is wrong. Because you can give him the architect of your money, but when it comes to your marriage, it's like, ah, marriage is you. Money is him. Am I communicating? <laughs> Business is him. But uh, work with God. Character, it is you. Then people look at your business and say, oh, this is God. They look at your character, they say, ah, we are confused. <laughs> if this is God, then I think he's, he doesn't do a very good job. But because all his ways is perfect, he will make the, the, the table room perfect. Talk back to me. The bedroom perfect. The toilet, you see the seat will be diamond. <laughs> Am I communicating? <laughs> yeah. The parking, the parking will be something else. Somebody shout Hallelujah. Your marriage will be excellent. He wants, he wants every area to be the one involved in building because all his ways are perfect. Somebody shout hallelujah. I had, that, I, had that, I had that carpenter one day and I told him I want to, him to fix something in my house. Then I told him I want it to be done within this short time. He told me, Pastor, exactly what you want. If you want me to do it, during this time, look for another carpenter. Yeah. He said, if you want me to do it, to, if I must do it do the, the, during the time you want, I can produce the kind of products that he presents me. So maybe you look for another carpenter. By saying that, I gave him the job. I said, take all the time you want. Take all that. I was not in a hurry. Take all the time you want. Take all the time you want. He was telling me, I like my products to have my signature the signature of excellence. I'm glad to let you know God loves his product to have the signature of excellence. The signature of excellence. The signature of excellence. And most, most of us believers, we are misrepresenting him because he never built us. We are building ourselves. We are reading, leading ourselves. We are not fully surrendered to God. Tell somebody next to you, surrender. Tell somebody else, surrender. Surrender. I don't know. I think the one behind needs to be told also. Tell them surrender. <laughs> hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Let me give you one scripture that is going to bless you as we wind up. Isaiah 42 and verse 8. Never forget this scripture. Never forget this scripture. Come here. Uh, uh, Chief Blemmy again. Allow me to use it for Let's read one to God. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another, nor my praise to carved images. Listen to me. God will never break his rules. He will never break his rules. He says, I am the Lord, that is my name. Nikulinga. As I am say. <laughs> I'm the Lord, that is my name. And my glory, 
I'll never give to another. In other words, if I build you, I'll ensure that it will give me, me glory, me, me. God will never, if he builds you, whatever he builds, it will give him glory. It's not something small. It will always give him glory. If he builds, he says, my glory, my project, <laughs> it must bring me glory. And then he says, my glory, if I build you, I will never allow somebody else to take the credit. I will never allow somebody else to take the credit. Come on, somebody. That's why God will push some of the people out of your life because he knows if they help you, they'll take the credit. God will push them away, make you better, make you better, make you better. So don't worry when some people walk out. Sometimes God is defending his credit. Come on, son, Am I preaching right? He said, and my glory I will never give to another. Listen to me. So he says, if I build you, I want to receive the glory. Am I communicating? Then he says, if self builds you, because he says, my glory I will never give to another. Also, somebody else's glory I will never take. So if yourself build, God says, I don't take glory from you. So you're not my project. So if you don't surrender eventually, your life will never bring glory to God. Because he says, he says no, this is your expertness, this is your skill, this is your conniving that has made you, so you're okay. I, I, don't want to take, I don't want to take the glory of your academics, the glory of your connections, the glory of everything, the glory of your beauty. Yeah, Because I don't give my glory to another, I also don't take somebody else's glory. So there are people who are living and the little success they have, God says, I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> and I'm not interested. Because I don't take somebody else's glory. That is your personal glory. Enjoy it. But according to me, I want my life to give glory to God. I want my life to give glory to God. So it also reduces the effectiveness and the value of your life to God. Because God says, all your success, everything you have, I have nothing to do with it. So I will never take your personal glory. But some of us are committed. We want our life to give God glory. How many people are saying, I want my life to give God glory? Yes. God says, then, allow me to build you. Yeah. So that I can genuinely feel legal. It is legal for me to claim glory from you. Because I'm the one responsible. I have told God, any success that is minus you in a thousand years, I don't want it. The car that you can give my nurse, you take it far from my life. The honor that you can give my nurse, you, no matter how wonderful it is, today I regard it as a curse. Take it far from me. Because I don't want anything in my life that God cannot claim glory. But you see, if it, everything must give glory somewhere. So if what you are is giving glory to you, you're an idol worshiper. Because giving glory is worship. So if your achievements are giving glory to you, then you are worshiping you. <laughs> and there's a curse for those who worship idols. Am I communicating today? That's why we must marry according to God telling us so that your, your marriage, God can claim glory from it. He says, I'm the one who built it. Oh, let me give you the last scripture. Let me give you the last scripture. Can I give you the last scripture? I've just remembered it. The last scripture, it is, it is what? It is Philippians 1.6. Philippians 1.6. Oh, this is good. This is good. Anybody receiving something from the Lord? I'm, I'm trying to convince you why you must surrender to God fully. And surrender your mind, surrender your emotions, surrender your job, surrender your marriage, surrender your talks, surrender everything to God. Let the government of God take over everything. That is how you, you enjoy the very best at all times. And then that's how God gets glory from your life. I'm so glad because of the crusades. He ordered it. He's getting the glory. Kama Sata. This marriage, it was the voice of God. God is getting the glory. Look at this. Let's read together one to go. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. God says, he that began a good work, 
will complete it. In other words, if you want me to complete it, allow me to begin it. If you want me to be in the journey, allow me to be at the foundation. <laughs> I don't complete what I didn't begin. Because <laughs> some of us, we want to get a relationship that God is not part of it at the beginning and then we tell him, now you, can, you are welcome. Karibu sana. Karibu sana. Karibu sana. Ni kama tumeanza, tumeanza safari hapa, town, tunaenda Mombasa, tukifika salama, tunachukua mungu hapa kwa stage. Mbisa <laughs> sana. Karibu sana. <laughs> he says now uh, salama. God says if you want me to be part of the journey throughout let me be part of the beginning Kalata. I only complete what I begin I only complete what I begin in other words if you want me to do the roof allow me to dig the foundation <laughs> allow me to be the master builder from the beginning I don't hijack other people's projects if it's a project of self, I will never hijack it somewhere in between. <laughs> so if you want me to do everything, do the bathroom, do the, the what? The builders, give me the, the names so that I can appear on it, please. <laughs> From the foundation. <laughs> the attic, yes. Aha. What else? The, 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 the slabs. Aha. The slabs. The, the penthouse. Hey, yeah. Let me let me do everything. Let, let me do let me do the color of the wall. If you want me to participate in the color of the wall, allow me to start the house myself. Because if I begin it from the beginning, every detail, ah, every detail, every detail, every detail will be magnificent. Every detail will be excellent. Every detail will be top class. But you want to do a shoulder work from the beginning and then you want me to come and do the roof. Then after five years, the house collapses and everybody says, house ya mungu, alionjenga imeenda chini. I don't want my CV. Come on, somebody. I am a master architect. I am also guarding my CV. I'm guarding my CV. If it is yours from the beginning, I don't want to be involved in it. So I'm careful. I don't want to begin anything that God doesn't want. Because I've decided to hand over my entire life to the master architect. His name is Jesus Christ. Clap your hands and stand up on your feet. Clap your hands and stand up on your feet. Clap your hands and stand up on your feet. Clap your hands and stand up on your feet.